Good morning guys, welcome to Wednesday. It's freezing cold. It's gonna be cold at least the next three days. So this barn is, this tack room area is minus six. This door was open, it was like a wind tunnel. I don't know why he leaves that door open. But this barn in here is about minus Eight. Go all the way around anyways. Do we have to go all the way around? Yes. Why? Because the door's closed. It won't open. Oh, frozen? At night it's minus 17, minus 18 Celsius. So having it be minus five, it was minus five in our goat, in the goat barn when I went down there this morning. So knowing that it's, is it a bird? So knowing that it was minus five made me feel a little bit better that at least I know that they're protected somewhat from the cold, horses as well. But today we're gonna address the heating system down in the barn, how we can keep it warm because we have baby goats coming anytime. I tried, written down the words to say, it is time, I've been waiting five days to explain how you make me feel inside, baby. Got it all figured out Wanna do this right There's a doubt in my mind Baby, you're the one Oh, so the scope barn is about minus eight now too. So far that's the coldest that I've seen it down here. And yesterday we had a scare thinking that our mama goat, one of our mama goat could be in a pre-labor or early labor or getting ready to go into labor. So it made me really think about how we're gonna handle these babies if it's cold out when they're born. If they come when we think they're supposed to come, it should be a lot warmer, it should be above freezing, and I won't worry so much. But in the meantime, we're preparing. That's too tall for that, I think. Too tall for this barn. What? <laughs> how? Well, the heat is there, and you don't want it right against the wood. So I'm gonna have to get the small one. Remember the thing that I put on top of the propane tank? All right, well this sucks. Every time we try and make it warmer in here, it just gets harder. <laughs> so we are planning to use a big heater like this in the barn, unchaperoned. That's just not our style. Do you guys remember when I went to that equine first aid last year, I think it was? Well, it was held in a barn and it was in winter. And he had one of, this thing, one of these things in the middle of the barn and it kept us toasty warm. So I'm not planning to use something like this unchaperoned in the barn, that would be crazy. It's quite light, it could fall over. Um, but I am hoping to be able to use something like this when Sophia and I are in the barn either assessing a doe, trying to determine if she's gonna go into labor soon, like we did yesterday, or during the birth. This is the kidding stall that we're gonna be using. We have a little layer of shavings on the ground and then we're gonna fill it with straw. The thing I like about this one is that it's got this big huge wall here, a wall there, and half of a wall over there. So the only real opening is over here and I can even hang some blankets, some thick blankets or something on this wall on that thing and over oh, here to try and keep it warm and draft free. Well, hello. <laughs> so uh, today I was talking to a friend about, you know, would we sell Tilly and Rosie? And that probably is gonna be what happens. We don't wanna have too many goats and they're not the kind of goats, like their attitude, their, their disposition is not exactly what we want. Stop, stop biting my coat. I know. He's like, just let me nibble you. Too bad you weren't a girl because he has such a good personality. Sam had an idea. 
One of the reasons that the barn is so cold is that we leave this door open during the day because the duck and the goose want to come in and out. And they need the light. So what we decided, what did you decide, Tim? I put plastic almost halfway, maybe three quarters of the way. She's going to try and block off some of the wind. The wind that comes in. Yeah. So today we are breaking out, ooh, these buckets. Oh. I'm actually so incredibly grateful for the heated waters outside. There are two of them and they serve the goats so well. The water is actually hot, like it's very, very warm. And the goats love, a lot of goats love warm water, especially in the winter, and they drink from that thing all day long. I keep thinking that if worse comes to worse, this room here, that has a door on it and that is that we could run some heat in here. We could put a like a heat on the ceiling. There's lots of plugs and stuff in here and make it safe. I keep thinking that in a pinch if the kids are born on a really cold day that we could use this room. Sam doesn't want to, obviously I get it, but if we have to, this is warmer than our other barn. It's warmer than like a garage would be. So at least you kind of have options. I want to be so prepared. When the boat, when the goats got bred, I was thinking that it wasn't that big of a deal. The winter. It's warmer already in here. Is it? No, but it feels like it. <laughs> so I was thinking like, it won't be that cold. We'll be able to manage it, but I am really worried. This is my biggest fear now is the cold. It's the weather as we wait to deliver these baby as we wait to deliver these babies. It's supposed to get really warm again, above freezing, and I just pray that that happens and it stays that warm until after the kids are born and after like a couple of weeks so that they can regulate their, their temperature and get some fat on them. Me, he's vicious. So uh, this is really cool. We have um, one of our heated water buckets in with a buck. This is a safety cord, so. We got a safety it, cord. It locks it in place, so. In order to take it out, you got to press this button. Typically, you would tape that with electrical tape no, so that no. nothing can get in there. But because it's a safety cord, you don't really have to do that. Don't let them rip your coat. Yeah. See, I would normally tape it too sometimes. but. So, we wanted to take time and put these on. I know a lot of people are worried about the fire hazard of having anything plugged in in a barn. Um, these should be fine. They're brand new. They're in very good repair. We have we have all of them hung up like away from the hay and we have the extension cords hung up and like you saw we're using safety ones. So hopefully they'll be okay. I feel confident that they will be okay. We've actually used heated buckets with our horses often in the past. In fact, Penny's had a heated bucket in her area for the last little while because her water has been freezing. So we have used them with great success. I can't say why. Some other people use them and have issues. I have friends who use them. In fact, a lot of people use them in Canada and around in our area, a lot of my friends use them because it's the only way to keep the water from freezing in weather like this. Unplug it during the day and plug it at night. Well, we're gonna leave it on today though. We'll leave it on during the day so we can see, it, make sure that it works before we leave the goats in tonight. But yeah, we're working on it, you guys. We're trying to figure it all out. The, the fact that it's cold now is putting a big, huge damper in our kidding season. The fact that my fat cat can actually climb a wall is surprising. But we've been coming down. We came down. Sophie him and I came down at 10 p.m. last night and did night check. Why do they do that to their plaything? Because they get wrestling, fighting. And I know you are the cutest baby. Like I talk about how in one day we may sell her and her baby because she just doesn't have the kind of personality that's going to enable us to help her with kidding if she needs it and to milk her and which is essentially what we want now that we're a month out or less actually we're less than a month out now that we're just a few weeks away from kidding season i sylvia and i are so much more paranoid you saw in yesterday's video we noticed a change in our dough and we're so serious about not missing 
the birth so that nobody gets cold. One thing that I'm really good at is noticing changes. I'm good at noticing things. I'm good at seeing things that other people don't see. So when I see a change in our goat, I always want to be like so super careful and watch and see. Look at her, her back end. And if it means I spend like an extra half an hour or an hour in the barn assessing someone, I definitely want to do that because I want to be prepared and not caught off guard. But what are we going to do for the birth, for the heat? You're going to bring that little one down and we're going to use that? Shoot out. I'm okay with that. Did you know chows chew their cud too? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. Because they're remnant, remnant, remnants. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. So we have a small one of these things. We've used it when the power's gone out before. You guys have seen it in previous videos. It hooks to this, and you just put it on, and you sit by it, and it actually heats up the space really, really well, as well as that thing. So we won't be using that. We use the small one, though. Yeah, we're going to use the small one. You don't know how I shiver inside. Doesn't show, but my nerves are inside out. It's because you're not worth it. Don't you know that you're beautiful?